basic ospf with microtik router os version 7.5 stable this will be our topology for this video demonstration we have two microtik chr with version 7.5 stable firmware so the objective is endpoints in both our lan will be able to reach one another as well as all endpoints should be able to reach the internet this should be done with the help of open shortest path first dynamic routing protocol so let's start with microtik router number two so as you can see it has a system identity of md2 and the current firmware System packages is router OS 7.5 with a build time of August 30, 2022. So for MT2, the IP address is 10 slash 30. So we go to IP addresses. So the Ether2 interface is configured with 10 slash 30. For Ether3, the IP address is 192.168.200.1 slash 24. As such, this is configured on Ether3 with the corresponding IP address. So as a preliminary verification, let's try to reach from MT2. If we could reach the internal IP of MT1. So that will be 192.168.100.1. So timeout. As another check, see if we could reach any public IP address or we could reach the internet. So timeout. Let's try another IP address. And yes, as a preliminary verification, we are able to reach the internal IP as well as the internet. So this time, let's go to MT1. So system identity mt1 and system packages router os version 7.5 so next will be the ip addresses of mt1 on ether1 ether2 and ether3 interfaces so ip addresses so you have going to ether2 then 2020.1 slash 30 on the land side will be 192.168.100.1 on ether3 interface and you have a dynamic ip on ether1 going to the internet and it has a loopback address of 192.168.255.1 and we should configure this on the loopback interface as a preliminary check let's see if mt1 will be able to reach mt2 on the 10 20 20 network and yes is able to so let's see if i could reach the internal network of mt2 that will be 192.168.200.1 so in this time it's no and finally will i be able to reach the internet and yes i am able to reach the internet let's try a different ip this time and yes it's confirmed so now let's configure ospf so we go to routing ospf but before that we have the router id setting okay so it's currently taking the 192.168.255.1 so for router id let's say if you want to remove the dynamic so if you click remove you have an error of couldn't remove router id and cannot change the dynamic item so instead you can click plus if you really want to let's say this is your read one or router id one and this will be the still the loopback ip address 55.1 and uh, you could select only loopback but for me it's okay so apply okay it should have your static router id configuration so let's close router id window go to routing menu ospf so you have the instances tab interface templates interfaces areas 
and some more tabs for OSBF. So let's go to Instances tab and click the plus sign. So you have the name of the OSPF instance, the version. So you have the router ID assignment. So you could drop down and select the read one, which we statically configure. If you have any routing table, so yes, you could assign how you handle your routes and your route filters. But for now, so we'll have the name as the default one, the version, and the router ID for this. Click apply, click OK. Next is if you go to interface templates and click the plus sign, you'll notice that the area straight away is red and you don't have any area that is configured. Second is the instance ID is a number. And of course, uh, ID being an ID is a number and it's not a name. And if you backtrack a bit, our instance is actually a name. There's no ID assignment for this. So unless, of course, you go to new terminal, to routing, OSPF, instance, and print, and you will see that this name, OSPF instance 1, is being assigned with the ID 0. Next, we'll settle the area first. As you can see, it has a red uh, color because there is no area configured. So we have different types of area in OSPF, backbone area, standard areas, and other areas. So for now, since we are only configuring basic OSPF on our area, so we call this one as the backbone area with the area ID of 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 for the instance, you have the OSPF instance 1. The type is default and that should be it. Apply and OK. So then we go back to the interface templates and proceed with the configuration. So the interface, so in our topology, our interface or OSPF interface for MT1 will be Ether2. So there is no OSPF router on the internet. There is no OSPF router on Ether3. So the only interface that we should expect OSPF traffic will be Ether2. So let's select Ether2 area. We only have one area, which is the backbone. Networks, 10. 2020 slash 30 and 2020 slash 30 network type okay so we could just select broadcast or point to point instance id is zero okay other than that we accept the default apply okay then if you go back to instances I would like to redistribute my default route so that MT2 and its LAN or endpoints will be able to go to the internet. So originate default could be always or if installed. Second is I need to redistribute my internal 192.168.100.0 or Ether3 network. So I could redistribute connected routes as well. Apply. Okay. So let's now configure MT2. So routing, router ID. So plus sign. So the same with one with the ID of 192.168.255. This time it's two. Apply. Okay. So next will be the routing OSPF instance. So accept the default name, router ID will be read one, apply, okay. Next will be area, so plus sign, just have the same name, ONSPF instance one, area ID is 0, 0, 0, 0.0.0.0, type is default, click apply, click okay. Next will be the interface templates. So plus sign, 
so the ospf traffic will be on ether2 only so ether2 area will be backbone the same network then 20 20 0 slash 30 broadcast to be changed as ptp click ok we will also configure redistribution instances and there is no default route for mt2 it has no internet connection so we will redistribute the connected route for mt number two apply okay next let's verify what happened as a result of our configuration so if you go to interface so there is a dynamic interface for ospf on ether2 next we should see a neighbor so we have our neighbor 10 2021 which is mt1 with a state of full next you should see link state advertisements such as you have the you have the advertisement of uh, 192.168.100.0 this network next is the default route and finally the loopback address of your mt1 so therefore you should be able to see on your routing table ip routes so you have dao dao or dynamic active ospf so now you have a default route next is you're able to see the network of mt1 which is the lan network and you're also able to reach the loopback ip of mt1 so for verification we have an endpoint pc2 let's check if i will be able to reach the networks on mt1 as well as the internet so for example i ping 10 10 the 20 the 20 that one yes there's a reply let's say if i ping 192.168.100.1 yes there is a reply let's see if i ping the pc number one ping 192.168.100.100 and yes there is a reply and finally let's check if there is an internet connection and timeout so let's investigate quickly why there's a timeout on PC2 when it tries to reach public internet. So as you notice, the firewall, not the masquerade as a source address of 192.168.100.0/24. So meaning to say, it only allows the LAN of MT1 and not the LAN side of MT2. So as a solution we could just re simply remove the source address something like this or if you wanted as well you could also do a slash 16 which uh, would include a lot more but just for a temporary solution so click apply click ok and we'll see there is now a reply from pc2 computer when it wants to go to Google DNS. So if we go back to MT2, there's one more that we want to take note that on MT2 is able to see the default route. It's okay. On MT2 is able to see the LAN side. It's okay. On MT2, I am able to see the loopback of MT1. However, there is one route here, which is the route of going from MT1 to the internet router. So because of redistribute connected, meaning to say MT1 has a configured redistribution of connected routes. So this is also a connected route. So it redistributes to MT2. So on our next or future video, we'll try to see how we can contain or to filter out this particular internet route or the route that is connected to our ISP router.